Hey, what's up guys? Hot Ready here, uh, Saturday night, going over some, uh, some of my trapping stuff, so I thought I'd do a little, uh, call it a trapping bag dome. So, I, uh, when I trap, I trap out of my truck or off a four-wheeler, and, uh, what that allows me to do is to have separate bags for separate sets or separate species. So I use a couple different bags. I use five gallon buckets for my tools and for my traps. Um, I also have my wax dirt in a five gallon bucket and my peat moss in five gallon buckets. Um, so these are two of my bags here. This is my predator bag, coyote bag. Um, and then this is mink and coon mostly. Um, I got some, a few cricks that I trap beaver in. Um, I don't have a whole bag set up for that. Usually I just pull right up to where I want to set them. So um, I just use 330s and uh, um, counter stands for those. So, but uh, two main bags, like I said, predator bag, coon bag, and We'll go over the predator bag first here. Um, this is a, uh, a bag I got from Menards and it's a master force bag and it was like, it was made for, for a traveling bag. Um, the big pockets around the outside are actually big enough to fit urine bottles and, and the bait bottles, um, the bait cans. And, uh, I don't have most of my lures out. I keep my lures um, stored in a refrigerator during the off season. But these are some of the new ones. The lures I just stack, you know, stack on each other in, in one of the pockets. Um, so yeah, like I said, the outside pockets perfect for uh, for your bait cans. And I do. They're just big enough. You can fit two on top of each other. So, um, works out really good. I think this bag, like I said, I got it at Menards. I think it was like a surveyor's bag or it was something, something other than like a, you know, a contractor bag. Um, cause most of the contractor bags you see, you got the small pockets for screwdrivers and pliers and stuff like that. And, and nothing ever really fits well in them. So when I found this bag, I was like, whoa, that's perfect. Um, yeah, so on one side I run the urines, the other side I run the baits, and the, the lures are on the outsides. Um, like I said, the urines fit in there perfect. Uh, trying some new urine from uh, Rusats this year. Um, fit right in there. I got a, that's a leftover fox urine from, uh, from Hoosier Trapper. And, so, baits, urines, lures on the outside. Inside, I got two coffee cans. Um, coffee cans, I mean, they're worth their weight in gold. I use coffee cans for everything. Uh, let's see. So, one coffee can has got um, hand covers. So, I use coffee filters on my MB550s for pan covers. Um, I've tried this, the, the screen wire, which is in here, and you just, I can't ever get it to lay right without having a bubble in it, and then if there's a bubble on your, on your um, pan cover, they're gonna get dug. So I've had issues with that. So I stopped using screen wire on MBs, on the MB550s. And then, right now this has peed in it. The can's about, half full with peat and then I just stack the stack my paint covers right on top of that. So I got my peat or dry dirt or wax dirt depending on what time of year. Um, I mostly run peat and then just the dirt at the set. And then I run the I run the wax dirt when I get real cold. So that's in there. Um in this one I have cheap wool. So I, I'm mostly a dirt hole guy. I'm 90% of my sets are dirt holes, and every set I'll use a 
handful of sheep wool, I'll put my bait on it, shove that down the hole, and then your lure and your urine. But uh, so I got sheep wool, your dried dirt or peat or whatever you're using. Um, I said the screen wire, this was actually an aluminum screen that I tried last year. It didn't, it didn't work too bad um, on everything but the MB550, but uh, like I said, this year I'm using uh, no BS, um, no BS uh, K9 Extreme Juniors, and they've got their own uh, steel screen, so I'm going to use that. It's, it's way stiffer than this uh, aluminum. Um, so they're in the one side. Inside the bag are little pockets, and then the big opening in the middle. Um, so inside, like I said, I got the, all that, um, I usually carry some trap tags, some spares, um, some marker, a lot of sets I'll mark, just so that it's easier, I can, you know, usually glass them up with binoculars, and then you can pinpoint your, where it's at with the, with the marker. Oh, uh, J-hook tool, and extra J-hooks, um. Yeah, and then I also got just a an old butter knife jammed in the side. That's what I get my bait out with. Um, so that's about it on the uh, on the predator bag. Get that put back in. Damn, coon bag. So coon sets are primarily uh, DPs. Um, I do do some cubby sets with uh, some no BS one and a halfs. Um, so my cubby sets are usually these little PVC, jam them in the dirt, put your bait in there, and uh, your one and a half below it. I also use the one and a half for bait sets, muskrat, and then I also do. Uh, the 110s for uh, mink and muskrat. But uh, this is my coon bag I'll call, but I do also have my um, my mink baits and urines and, and lure in here as well. Um, this is just an old bag I've been using forever. This actually started out as what I used as my predator bag for a while. It'll hold the bait cans in the middle and then whatever else you got on the sides. Um, so I carry a screwdriver um, for cleaning out the DPs or for tightening up the screws. Um, these little county brackets. A lot of times I'll just screw these right to a right to a log, and then you can set your one tail on there. Some extra cable for anchoring the DPs, which I, I've gotten away from. I don't use this very often. You know, you got your cable and you can anchor your DP. I got some quick ones on here. I've got a DP setter. Um, most of the kids use that. But uh, anchor on your DPs to uh, trees. Like I said, I've gotten away from that. Unless I have to, if the situation dictates that I have to uh, anchor to a tree or to a gate or, or anything like that because the ground's too hard or or whatnot. Um, but most of the time for my um, for my DPs, I carry these stakes. I got a whole bucket full of stakes with my DPs. Um, I'll run these stakes down through uh, like the last swivel on the DP. You just put your stake through it, and then you leave. I leave. I don't know about an inch or so, so you got room for your DP to swivel. And you just jam these in the ground. I haven't lost anything yet. Um, I was having I was having a lot of pullouts anchoring to the trees with the uh, with the cable, especially if you got cable that's too long. The shorter the better, I found out. Um, but that's kind of hard to judge depending on what trees you're trying to anchor to. But uh, yeah, so uh, like I said, I got quick links setter. Um, it'll hold. And this is a husky bag. I probably got from Menards or Lowe's or something. 
A um, couple different DP baits I'm trying out this year, the DP Coon bait and the, from Dunlaps and the, the Blue Balls from No BS. Oh, a couple of uh, DP um, Annihilator and Hillators or whatever you want to call them for the, from, from Rusat, the cherry one and a crawfish one. Um, fish oil and a couple different lure, coon lure, mink lure, and then some uh, some different uh, lures here on the sides as well. It holds it holds quite a bit, just just enough. Um, and I also carry the screws and a screw bit for the. Uh, for the county brackets. Like I said, a lot of times I'll just go right out and screw them on a log or a log go across the creek or something. So I always got that with me and then I will just go right back in. Um, for tools, for the tools I carry everything in a five gallon bucket. That seems to work out pretty good for me. Um, so, got the nailing pad and so I, I use different gloves for, you know, baiting your set and then different gloves for making your set. Um, a lot of times I just wear rubber gloves if it's muddy, but most of the time I just wear uh, like mechanics gloves or whatever, whatever I got um, for making the set so it's dry out. But uh, gloves, different gloves than what you're using to bait your sets with. Um, third hole auger. Like I said, I'm 90% run dirt holes. Um, the dirt hole auger just makes it way easier. And then also, um, I'm still using the super stakes as anchors, and this is the easiest way I've found to, uh, to pull those super stakes. You get your trap, you hold it up, and then you, you run your dirt hole auger right down, right down next to the chain, as far as it'll go. And you can grab a hold of your trap and pull it and cock that uh, that super stake over into your hole and pull that thing out like butter. That's um, that's the only way to pull those super stakes that I've found. Otherwise, they they just don't come out. They hold. And then yeah, you know you got your your cordless drill for the running your journal logger. Um, I got a. Uh, a new super stake driver last year from Stalker Fabrications. Um, I used that heat treated one from Minnesota brand for years and um, just just got tired of, you know, sometimes you smack your hand with a hammer or whatever. The, the Stalker one is is uh, is is a lot beefier. Um, it's got the hand guard on the top and then the, the bigger um, nut on the top for, for smacking with your hammer. But, uh, so you're going to need some sort of a driver for whatever staking system you're using. And I've had nothing but, nothing but good luck with those super stakes. Um, trap and hammer for, dig, for digging your trap beds and pounding your stakes. Um, this is just a cobalt sledgehammer that I got it. Uh, Lowe's and then a friend of mine welded on a uh, digging end. I think it's a piece of like leaf spring off an old pickup. But uh, this this I've had for well since I started trapping and it's held up good. Finally, I had to fill it with some epoxy on the top to keep the head on. See how that holds up this year. But uh, you're gonna need a trapping hammer with a digging end and then. Uh, just a sifter. I like this sifter from, from No BS. I've had it for quite a while. It's got that black coating that they coat their stuff with. Um, 
the uh, the sifter, the the, the uh, sifter part of it, I wish was a little bit finer. You know, it's it's got pretty good sized um, grading in there, and it'll let some chunks get through. But oh, it's a good sifter. Um, yeah, like I said, everything's in a bucket. All my tools are in the same bucket. Um, you know, all your all my DPs are in the same bucket. So it's, it's just easy in the back of a truck to grab grab what you need when everything's uh, organized into into different sets. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of going through and getting things set up for for trapping season here. It's oh a little over a month away for us here in Illinois. Um, let's see some so like here's my uh, coffee can again uh, off season lure storage that's a big uh, big topic everybody likes to talk about this um, my baits usually I just throw them in the refrigerator they don't usually have too much um, stink to them so I just throw them right in the refrigerator with nothing um, the lures though the lures I just, like I said, put in this coffee can and I will put it in the refrigerator and it keeps the, keeps the lures out. It's a refrigerator on my shop. There ain't nothing in there but, uh, but beverages. So, um, that's no big deal. But, uh, yeah, so lure, it's all just stored in this coffee can and then put in the fridge. And, um, DP bait, that's some DP bait that I made. Uh, I call it uh, um, cherry coon crack. What it is is a sweet 16 livestock feed with some corn. And then, uh, you know, you fill it up just about full. And I put uh, one packet of cherry Kool-Aid, just a dry powder, put that in there and shake it up. That works good, uh, but probably the, the, the Thing I use the most is uh, just dry cat food. Dry cat food is that's what I catch most of my coon on. Like I said, this year I'm gonna try um, those DP baits. And this one, the DP bait from No BS Lures, uh, it's called Berry Blue Balls. It actually glows in the dark, um, but it's uh, it's like little. I don't know, probably fish food is what it is, and then it's got some kind of a coating on it, but it smells good. So that would be kind of interesting to see see that, how that goes in the dark. And then some Dunlap's DP Coon Bait fish flavor. I'm going to give that a go, see how that does. Um, and then I also got some Firefly glow coon from Dunlap, so I'm going to give that a go to and see how that works, but uh, like I said, mostly mostly in the past I've always just used dry cat food or that uh, uh, cherry coon crack that I make. Um, yeah, so season's getting closer, getting everything lined up, uh, working on a um, new pot for boiling and and uh, dye in my traps. It's uh, it's an old keg that somebody was gonna throw away, so I took that. It's all stainless. Uh, you cut the top off it, and you got a nice big pot with handles. Got the handles on it. Uh, I think I'm gonna put a hole in the side and put a valve on it so I can drain off the uh, you know the stuff you boiled off your traps, the wax and the grease and all that, and. You can just crack that valve and drain down and drain all the all the water off the top, so you don't have to dump your pot. But uh, yeah, other than that, uh, just getting everything in order for trapping season. Uh, bow season started a few days ago. Went out this morning, got out the stand there a little bit. It's been kind of drizzly all day, but um, kind of messing around here in the shop. Thought it'd be a good chance to. Uh, Put a video out for you guys on the trapping bags and just kind of a little information on everything while I have everything sitting out. But uh, yeah, so stay tuned. We got some more videos coming and uh, y'all take care.